We're back. Oh, hang on. I've got something on my camera. There we go. Um, I can't get the laptop working. Don't know what's wrong with it. Um, but we will go with it. And I'm trying to get you a better angle. I've had a little bit of a rearrange to help out. Cool. We'll just give a couple of minutes for people to get here. For my drink. Before we get started. Okay, so there you go. You, you guys can look after my drink. Um, blah, 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 blah. Just while we give people a few minutes to get here, um, one thing, so I don't normally really drink all that much water. Um, I, I don't like the taste of it. So I stick with juice, but when you're dehydrating, it gets really, really hot. Even though I'm in a cold agricultural unit right now, um, dehydrators, they put out a hell of a lot of heat. Um, partly why I've done it here, because of ha having both running at the same time rather than at home with the heat that we're having at the minute. Um, so yeah, make sure you stay hydrated um, whilst you're doing, because suddenly it'll get really hot and you'll be like, how did that happen? Okay, so we're gonna start with the last bits of like organs and things um and then we'll go back to the molds and i'll do the kangaroo and the rabbit to show you the flipping out on the tray i managed to get all the hair in whilst you guys were gone and i also finished chopping the liver and put it on and this is what my liver looks like so you can see got the teflon sheet on that's moved over um and i've just piled it on there and in an hour and a half ish i'll check on it see if it's got a skin and then i'll flip it off that liner so it doesn't seep through actually while we're here fish are all nicely defrosted now you can kind of see the the liquid that's come out but that'll all dry as it's going willies are doing well because you know um testicles so we've got that little bit of a skin coming on so these are the new ones that i put in and you can see it's kind of got more of a skin on now that one's still a bit soft um so i'll leave it a bit longer but the ones at the back that were in longer have got that skin on so I'll wait for these other ones to go. Hopefully it'll happen before we come off camera. Um, and then we'll flip them. If these ones aren't done, then some of the ones I put in earlier, we'll flip them and get them sorted. So you guys kind of see the difference. Um, but yeah. Okay, so we shall start off with the lungs. Where have I put my scissors and knives there? Um, yeah, we'll start off with the lungs. Where I had another pair of scissors. I've put them somewhere really safe. Don't know where that safe place is. I always have two sets of scissors with me, one larger pair, one smaller pair, because sometimes that this big blade doesn't quite um, get in like smaller spots that I need to, where it's a little bit fiddly, but I've put them somewhere so safe I can't find them. Okay, so lungs. They come in pairs, again, like your testicles, um, and they're always, in the UK, um, usually connected, well, so that's not always, but probably 99% of the time, um, they come connected with the trachea, etc. all on there. Um, trachea is free for you to use because you've only paid for the lungs. So I've cut one half off. Um, there is the fat lining on this as well. So again, you wanna make sure that you get rid of that. Um, it's literally finding that point either side that is where the um, trachea splits off between the two lungs, kind of pinpointing it stretch it out and just cut across there um, and you will see your air entry into your lung so what can we use of this this is all fat just get rid of it um, I used to kind of chop right down here and make sure I got all of the trachea that's in here hidden in the fat I don't do that anymore because well I don't need to so I'm just going to chop that off and put it in my sim pot um, to take home with me and put in the food caddy because I haven't got a food caddy here. Um, with tracheas, we have tons of tracheas to do. These are lambs' lungs, by the way. Um, pigs' lungs, so much bigger, look exactly the same. Cows' lungs don't ever do it because they're monsters and it just it, it's too much kerfuffle. Um, they, it, lungs are lungs at the end of the day. So, um, again, like we did with the um, willies, we're taking off 
any bits of fat. So on the trachea, you'll get a lot more kind of unobvious fat. So that didn't look all that obvious. Um, it's through experience and kind of having a play with it that you can see it ends up separating off and you get a thin little bit. So just trimming that off so that you haven't got that melty fat in the dehydrator. I can't believe I came on here to do one live and kind of crap myself about that and now I'm doing a second part. The things we talk about at 2 a.m. Ruby that trigger me onto this and make me go mad. So we've got another bit of fat there. Um, don't panic too much if you do end up cutting off any of the trachea. Like there, I've just hit a bit. It just opens up a little bit, but the um, tissue on the inside is still gonna hold it shut anyway. Um, obviously with the tracheas you can get um, cow's tracheas are the most common ones um, sheep's tracheas the next don't often get pig's tracheas um, even on the lungs they tend to be too small to use is what it is um, but yeah oh, get off my finger okay so that's trimmed off all the fat kind of looks the same to most people oh no there's a little bit see um, looks the same as it did to most people. It's just getting your hands on it and you feel it. Now with any trachea, I always rinse down the inside before I put it in the dehydrator. It tends to be quite bubbly in there because obviously it's got any leftover saliva before it's been frozen um, to be distributed for either raw meat or whatever it's being used for. Um, so yeah, it's just literally running the tap down it just to rinse off any bubbles. What I'll try and do is I'll save a couple and I can, uh, hi Ruby. Um, I'll save a couple and I'll try and do a separate video to post so that you can see the, what I mean by the bubbles because it's kind of hard to explain but I can't rinse it out and hold the camera to show you at the same time. With cow's tracheas, I always also chop them in half um, down the tube. Again, it's just that safety thing that if the dogs get too eager with it and they swallow it, then um, it's not going to get, well, not as likely to get stuck. I'm not going to say it won't happen. Um, not as likely to get stuck, but if it does result in something like a vet trip, um, it's easier for them to grab because they haven't got the whole tube to kind of manipulate to get out. So lungs, like I was saying with the liver, we've got lobes hanging off it because lungs are weird shapes. So starting off by just chopping them off to give me a kind of more straightforward shape to do. Is your dad gone now, Ruby? Or is he still watching? with interest and then slicing up like we did I normally do this whilst watching something like vampire diaries or weird stuff like that because I feel like I'm actually in the series then but I'm weird like that there you go useless fact of the day so yeah just chopping it up don't some bits will be thinner so the edges of the lungs are thinner again some people prefer to do this when it's semi-frozen I like it soft it's easier for me um it is a weird texture compared to anything else that you will ever touch. It kind of feels like a big block of marshmallow um, and it dehydrates really, really light. Um, so if you are using this out and about, don't use it on a windy day because it will blow everywhere if your dog doesn't catch it. Cool, so we've got obviously the full thickness with these and it's just, as, it, as, I, I bleh, as with anything that's too thick, we just chop it down in thickness. So this one's quite thick. I've cut it at, at an awkward angle, but I'm just going to go in at an angle on that to thin it down. And again with that one, fiddling around. There we go. And then cubing it up as well. I will still put this on one of the um, Teflon sheets in the dehydrator because it's kind of sticky enough now. One of my hairs. Um, it's kind of sticky enough now in the bits that are defrosted. This bit's still frozen. That bit's defrosted. It's kind of a little bit sticky. So as it dries out and obviously the moisture goes off the um, skin, then uh, I've got a little bit of fat on there that I've missed. Um, then it sticks to the trays. So the Teflon sheet and then peeling it off when you flip it, once it's got that skin kind of look on it. Um, it is probably the most difficult one to do to flip off um, a Teflon sheet just because it does dry out so quickly. So here's a nice lung that's been butchered by a knife when the animal's been um, at the abattoir. Um, so yeah, as, as you're peeling it off the Teflon, you can leave it straight on your metal sheet, but again, you're gonna probably end up with little bits of lung stuck to the um, tray 
just because of how dry it goes um, is what it is. Right, I'm just gonna loosely, I'm just gonna kind of put this one into strips. Again, with this one, like the liver, I don't really worry about what thickness or anything I'm doing it because the, the way I use this tends to be more in things like noise boxes or hand feeding rather than um, like in a puzzle toy or um, a bit of kind of throwing games. So I really don't care about what size it is. It's actually really, really super high value for every dog that I've ever given it to. Um, rescue that I worked with three-ish years ago. Um, I introduced her dogs to Lung. When they were working with me, so I didn't give it away. Um, and it, it was one of her dog's favorite things that if he wouldn't do anything else, he'd do it for Lung. No problem. You can kind of hear the squelching noise. Remember that obviously lungs are full of lots of little lobes. They are solid looking inside, um, but they're supposed to have air bubbles in. That's kind of how they work. He's, uh, I, your dad's gone. He said, is this what dog trainers watch instead of come dine with me? Yes, this is the new version of come dine with me. In my opinion, it's way better than the actual show, but I don't think they'll ever put it on TV. Not brave enough. So this bit, we've got a little bit of the um, cartilage from the trachea in. I still dehydrate that as it is. It hasn't got a fat layer on it like the trachea has. So it's no biggie. You can cut it out if you want to. Um, if I was doing this at home, I would cut some bits out and um, my cats are kind of trained that they sit there and watch. And if there's a bit like that, then uh, I kind of give it to them for sitting patiently and not trying to swipe it off the tray. Thank you, Melissa. It's actually from America. It was a Facebook ad and I was like, screw it. I'm risking it. I need the top. Came in a variety of colors. I might try and find the advert if I remember. If you really want it, drop me a message and I'll have a proper hunt at probably two o'clock in the morning when I'm on the phone to Ruby. No battery. Okay, my battery's at 20%. We're gonna, we're gonna scoop that off to the side and pretend it's all cubed and going in the dehydrator. Totally happened. Dunking hands, washing up. Okay, so the tracheas, I've kind of covered there. I'll show you the ones that come not attached to lungs quickly because they tend to have a lot more fat on them, a lot more obvious. And yes, these are darker because um, they weren't obviously still attached to the lungs. Um, but yeah, it's just trimming it off. And because these are lamb, I'm not worried about washing my scissors. Um, trimming it off and putting it in your, your waste pot. Um, little bits of meat on this as well, just because again, the way it's butchered to get you the full length. But I'll do them later and show you the video in the group of the um, bubbles inside. Right, and now I've got a wipe again. Okay, so next up, we are going to do paddy whack. Yep, it is just tendon. Um, I can't remember where the hell this is from. It's been sat in the freezer, um, but it does have fat on it. And this is where you need your small knife. Some people find it easier to do raw. Some people find it easier to do frozen, like with everything, but it is just slicing it off. Um, and your knife will only tend to go through um, the actual fatty bits. Sometimes you've got to kind of force it a little bit. There we go. So yeah, it's just trimming off as much fat as you can. And I don't know whether you can see on camera, but the ligament is kind of yellowy um, and the fat, you can kind of see it sitting on the surface. I don't know whether it shows all that well. Maybe this piece shows better. So you can see the fat sitting on the surface, a slightly different color because it's thicker on that one. So yeah, it's just simply trimming them up and then sticking them in. And they take as long as they take, like there's no quick way to do it. Um, in the dehydrated group, it will tell you all the different temperatures for different things. I tend to be a little bit naughty and I will just whack it on full whack and watch as it goes. I don't time anything really. When it's dehydrating, I just keep checking and when it's done, it's done. Don't be worried about leaving dehydrators on for the night. Okay, my knife's gone blunt. Get my doohickey out. I am not about the uh, proper knife sharpeners. I have my little gadget that doesn't want to stick. Try it here. There we go. Right. There we go. 
hopefully that's better. So yeah, most of the fat on um, ligaments tends to come off just from scraping it anyway, once you get kind of a bit under it, and then you'll get bits that you do need to just chop, like where at the edges, it's just kind of still attached from where the, they've chopped the bits of ligament up, off the bones, etc. And there I've got a rather awkward bit of fat. If it's awkward, just get your scissors out. Once you've got it separated from the ligament anyway, it's super easy to chop. Ooh. Melissa, what are the things you check for when checking to see if it's done? So, basically, I kind of tap it. The, t the good old tap test. Um, I can give it a poke and I'll know if there's any giving it or not. I could, like, with the skin on the silicone mould stuff that I was showing you before, um, that you can kind of see really obviously. With things like ligament, it is just kind of, and the, and the will is, it is just kind of pull it out and see if it, when you tap it on the surface, what does it sound like? Does it move, etc. Proper technical terms, right? What dehydrator would I recommend for a first time? I heard about them blowing up. So, um, as I was saying in part one, try, if you can spend a little bit more, um, do it, it's worth it. You haven't got to kind of level yourself up too quick, um, too quickly then, because dehydrating is a little bit addictive, not gonna lie. Um, I started off with a bottom fan like Andrew James, which Andrew James doesn't exist anymore, but you can still pick up dehydrators um from him on ebay from him from the company on ebay etc um there's cheap ones on amazon and stuff that are like 30 40 quid i had one of those 30 40 quid ones and within probably six months i leveled up and i got my bio chef my bio chef was my christmas present it is over 100 pounds or was um so it was a bit more expensive but it's so worth it for having the metal shelves um all the cheap ones tend to come with plastic shelves, which they get brittle the more you wash them. Um, it, it's just, if you can spend that little bit more and get metal shelved with a back fan instead of the bottom fan, um, which mine are both back fans, as I've said. Um, bottom fan, I'll find a picture of one and put it up for you. Um, but yeah, the bottom fan one, stuff drips into them. You can't clean it out and then it ends up going kabang. Usually in the middle of dehydrating something, can you screwed? <laughs> so um i'll just do that one bit of paddy whack and again i'll post pictures of everything once it's done because there's loads because i don't want to take up too much of your time considering this is the second part um what does dehydration do to the nutritional value i'm not going to comment on that simply because there's an I haven't found any definitive research um obviously you're going to lose moisture because that's what dehydrating does um some Thing. Some people say that it doesn't affect nutritional value. Some people say it does. It literally is do the research and see what you feel comfortable with, a bit like raw feeding. Um, what, whatever research you want to stick with is what you want to stick with. Um, there's freeze drying in all sorts of different ways that people argue are better or worse and things like that. But um, I don't like freeze drying because it takes up a whole load of space because you have to space it out more and make sure it doesn't stick just the way that the, the freeze drying is done. Um, dehydrator I find so much easier and um, especially in the winter, it's free heating. Anyway, that's that piece of ligament all trimmed up now. Um, I'll take a before and after picture of another piece to post in the group so that you can see the difference because it's probably quite hard to tell on this. Um, but yeah, that's that done. Trying to whiz through as fast as I can but still getting the information in. You have to, Ruby, and I need all the videos of you flinging willies around your kitchen and hitting Milo in the face, okay? Right. Da -da -da -da. Where are we? Moles. Let's... I'm just going to fill the pyramid um, pan, the large one, for the Beastie Dehydrator um, to do one of the meat proteins, and then I'll do some different moulds for you. So... This one is just ever so slightly long for that dehydrator. So I think I'm gonna have to do what I did with my other ones because I know that it works like that. So, oh, where was it? One, two, three, four, five. 
Okay. So the kind of magic number is one, two, three, four, five. Just gonna chop that along, size it up so I know it fits on the tray properly and I don't have to mess about with cramming it, etc. etc. There we go, done. Sorted. Right. We'll do the kangaroo, seeing as it's here from the floor. And we'll knock everything on the floor because uh, that's what we do best. There we go. So, yeah. The kangaroo, as I say, dry, dry mix. You might see the difference with how I push it in compared to how I did the hair. Um, it's much more kind of fingertips use rather than um, using all of my hand. No, this is kind of the boring bit for watching on a video, but um, it is what it is. It's kind of become my favorite saying at the minute. It's kind of the motto for living through COVID really. No problem, Melissa. Right, have we got any questions while I'm squishing this into the mold? Might as well take the opportunity, any more questions? Where do you get the silicon stuff from? So, all of my silicon stuff is, oh, Ruby, you need to watch the end of part one. Um, colliery molds, which I'll do some of in a minute with the rabbit, etc. Um, but yeah, uh, these ones I got off Amazon, the pyra pyramid sheet pan things. Um, I think friends have got them off eBay, so whatever your preferred platform is, they will have them. They come usually in packs of two. Be really careful because I have seen people get stuck with, I say stuck, they get one, hence this is a single um, that a friend got. Um, but yeah, they get one in the pack because they think that they're in a two pack because all the rest of the listings are. Um, and then they arrive and they're like, where's the other one? Definitely worth having multiples of it simply because the things that are a wetter mix than you're expecting speeds things up so much and even if I was just doing like kangaroo and rabbit which I don't need to um kind of wait to flip I don't have to wash this one for example if I was just doing those two to use it again to stop the mixing of my proteins as I was saying before um I can just flip onto the next one and then they can go in the washing machine together and then the di uh, dishwasher so it saves a bit of time if you can make sure that you get two um, and if you're lucky and you get three packs, send me the link, please. Uh, can you use a rolling pin instead of your hand? You can. Um, people use knives and um, spatulas and things. I just use my hands because I'm kind of already mucky anyway. And I find it a little bit quicker. Um, being self-employed, everything needs to have some speed to it, but still get the quality that you want. Remember to smush it down so it gets in the holes. Any more questions? This is where I need like a second person to read so I can kind of concentrate and get through it quicker, but working with what we have. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, I've got no more senseless crap to kind of pipe on about and fill the gap, so I'm nearly finished, just bear with. Do I sell my products? Um, the official answer is no, because that's illegal without licensing and testing. I wear, I'm trying to go through the process of getting um, my license and all of that fun stuff. Um, Done. it's just that the way it works in the UK anyway is you have to pay um, per product to get it tested by DEFRA so um, even though like I use other brands products because as soon as I take out the packaging they have no proof that I haven't tampered with it in any way um, adding anything in even stuff like that so they like to have it retested under my name and basically make some extra money. Um, and also I have to do that for each individual one. So say I was to start off and just do kangaroo, 
uh, the venison, rabbit and hare, that would be four testing fees that I'd have to do, even though all I've done is take it out of the packet and put it in a mould. Hi, Kate. You missed all the willy flinging. So, I flipped it out and you'll see kind of how much easier this comes off because it's a drier mix than even the hair did when it was um, had the skin and it's literally flicking up the edges and peeling away and there's very little left in there. There we go, stick that one in. And then it can do its own thing. You, you missed the part one. I might have already said, but do you feed? Yes, I feed raw. See if the see more button wants to work today. Okay, I can't see more to see the rest of your comment. Um, dogs with sensitive stomachs, something, something, something. Um, I don't, I, I have one dog that he's sensitive to grains. That's partly why I've been so strict with his raw and why I got so big with dehydrating. Um, I kind of needed to. It was either that or spend a fortune on somebody else already dehydrating for me. Because dehydrating, buying dehydrated products isn't all that cheap from the big companies in the UK. Um, JR is probably the cheapest, don't quote me. Um, but they're probably the cheapest because they do kind of multi-packs, whereas other places tend to do either loose or like Hollings, for example, are just extortionate pricing for my pocket, especially with nine dogs. Um, if there's any more to your comment that I can't see beyond sensitive stomachs, if you type that bit out again, I shall answer it for you. Any more questions from anyone? Because I stupidly went on to carrying on doing the kangaroo into the tray and I was gonna switch over to something else. Da, 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 da. Part one is up for you to watch afterwards anyway. You're just kind of watching it backwards, but that's cool because I'm a little bit backwards anyway. Is everything I feed dehydrate? Not everything, no. Um, <coughs> treats wise, um, probably 90% is dehydrated. Um, there's some times where I do spend on other dehydrated just to see what it's like, if it's cheap, If, but I always check the back of the packet. So even if something says it is one meat protein, like we were saying about pig's ears earlier in um, that lovely green pet shop. Um, they advertise it as pig's ears, but there's no packaging for you to read in that case. It's just going off the look to know what it should look like. Um, and again, that just comes from seeing it, but I'll post that picture when um, the ears are all done so that you can see the difference yourself without having to dehydrate them for easiness. Um, this amount that I, so I've got, what, 12 kilos of mints that I'm dehydrating today, then testicle crisps, liver, sprats, pizzle, uh, lamb's ears, the paddy whack, trachea. So they're all kind of like my chews, but I still take them into account as my dog's raw diet. Um, this kangaroo is actually going on a little bit thicker than normal because it's a bit drier than how I normally have got it out of the packet, but it has been sat waiting for me to do um obviously while we've been doing the lives so it's dried out a little bit already making it a little bit thicker getting in the tray um but yeah so this amount the 12 kilos raw product will it it's roughly about 30 to 50 percent moisture depending on some things are 70 percent like it really does depend how much moisture has got to come out of things um, what it is, blah, 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 as to how much your end weight will be. Um, but dehydrating yourself gives you the opportunity to kind of learn that. So where I know that, say, one tray of um, hair is a kilo raw, I know roughly if I'm using half of a sheet in a day, I know that I've used um, half a kilo of raw product, even though it's not going to be that weight um, like in my hand post dehydration. So I can take that into account for um, feeding my dogs their actual raw. It's just making sure it's balanced out. The other mistake that I haven't mentioned, and I made it, most people have, when you first start dehydrating, 
and you're looking at packets and thinking, yeah, I can do that. It's minced and whatever. Um, one time I got something that had a low bone content. Can't remember what it was, um, but I had something that had a low bone content. Um, so it had more offal in it. I didn't kind of balance that out with the rest of their daily food and uh, we were on holiday so quite a lot of it was actually dehydrated I just didn't mix up enough and I ended up with um, squitty bums and then once I realised that I went the other way and fed some of the heavier bone um, content minces to you know balance it out as quickly as possible because you know away in somebody else's cottage that they're renting out to you Airbnb and uh, you don't want that on their carpets like it's not good and you don't want to have to clean that much because yeah you want to get on and do stuff so where's my towel Ugh, we're at 10 percent battery come on we can do this everyone send the positive thoughts to my phone staying charged enough to finish up for you um because i can't reach the charger and have it in the right position so molds so 160 molds, I tend to favor using rabbit for these. Um, it's a little bit, it's a dry mix, but it's a little bit wetter. Um, with these, I fill them and um, I leave like a kind of connective layer on the top and really, really push it in. I have used spoons. Again, it's one of those things that the easiest way I find it is to just use my hands. Put gloves on if you need to. Um, but I just find it easier to get it in there as quick as possible without too much faff. Anything that involves too much faff, I tend to find another way or not do it again. Um, I will put some rabbit in these for you. Hi, Jane. Oh, I thought there was another question there. Um, so yeah, I tend to use something like rabbit where it's a bit wetter than the kangaroo, but it's still dry enough. Um, and I'll put them in right side up in the dehydrator and then again, once I've got that skin, I'll flip it over in the dehydrator. So then as it finishes dehydrating, it kind of comes out of the mold itself. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I do with them. And I'm gonna, if I've got time to fill them on camera, I will do, but if I haven't, then I wanna kind of get through other stuff for you. So my colliery molds, well, and my donuts. Donuts, I like to do the venison in because it's a wet mix again but I'm also limited because I've only got one of these trays. Um, I need to find out where they're from really, more than fi Facebook Marketplace, um, and get some more so that I can do more of them because they're really nice for even snapping up and making treats on the go um, or giving a kind of jackpot treat for size-wise. Um, with these, if you are making a mix yourself, um, blending it or mincing it, whatever, Try and get it wetter um, because it goes in easier. If you're doing something like um, home-baked, like tuna loaf or something, I use these. Again, add extra water content um, and you'll probably find it easier either with a spatula, knife, or you can get the, like the little sauce bottles with the nozzles at the top. And if you get it watery enough, then you can get it in there like that and it's low mess. Um, I tend to use um, the the fussy shapes, so the stars, the little bones, um, the fish. I tend to use them for a yogurt and banana mix or yogurt and fruit mix um, because it's already watery enough that I can put them in there and then I get nice little shapes out of it. I haven't got yogurt and fruit mixes here today because obviously everything's meat, so I'm not mixing the two in the dehydrators. The little dots, they are super, super nice for doing meat in. Um, with something like kangaroo it's quite a coarse mince so there's fairly big chunks left in it um if you try and put that in this mold then it'll get stuck and it'll drag out and you'll feel like you've wasted your time uh have i put veg with mince and dehydrated it or dehydrated home cooked treats um i don't actually feed veg if i was if i'm putting veg or fruit into something it i'd be like pork and apple or lamb and mint or something like that um beef and carrot and i'll grate uh the carrot in so it's in small enough kind of sections but i wouldn't use something that has grated carrot in something like this i did used to have an actual mincer that i'd put it through like the raw companies do um which made it easier to do it with but i tend to do those sorts of things with my jerky gun 
again, it's just easier for me and I don't have to do too much faff. Um, you can put veg in like yogurt mixes, you can put veg strips in. My son is home educated and he, one of his first home education projects, we actually dehydrated a load of fruit and veg to see how long things took. So we'd made our own grapes and dehydrated pineapple and everything. Never, ever, ever do grapes because they take a year and a half, I swear. Well, that's just what it felt like. Um, but yeah, experiment with things. Just give it a go. And if it doesn't work, never mind. Don't do it again. Um, but yeah, so that's them. So then we come on to the mini donuts, the kind of medium sized bones and the stars from Colliery. I will do these with um, mints, the stars. I will use a wetter mint, so I'll use like the hair or the venison. Um, donuts. I've done the hair and venison in them. I haven't tried anything with a dryer mix yet, so I'll do that today and let you know. Um, the big bones, sorry, the medium bones. You can use any type in there because although they're quite narrow in the center, I mean, it's like a finger kind of width, um, they don't tend to get any drag from any meat or anything like that. And you don't need to use the um, sauce bottle thing to help you fill it easier and mess free. And then the big bones or big paw prints or these kind of rounded bones that, yeah, they look like, um, it, you know, use your imagination. Um, but these, I tend to just stick anything in. I don't have any restrictions on what I'll put in it. Um, so any meat goes. And then I have kind of like some smaller paw prints, so you can see the size difference. Um, those ones, again, I don't really restrict what I put in, but I also find it easier to stuff these by hand and kind of poke and prod and make sure everything's um, in all the crevices because these ones have got like little hearts in the middle don't know if you can see it um, and so I get the paw print definition I, I just like to make sure it's kind of pushed well in okay have we got any questions before I crack on and try and fit as much as I can in before my battery dies uh, you know the best option is get them from you yeah we, we don't do that though Jane because um, that's not allowed we just have to wait for the license to come. So, any questions? I'll start filling stuff so that you can kind of see some of these molds getting filled for as long as my battery lasts. Yes, Ruby, that does mean that I won't be able to uh, save this one, Soz. But I did save the last one, hopefully, if it worked right. Um, cool. Right. Let's get some rabbits. So we'll put that one to the side. We'll do that in a bit. Right, rabbit. Is this the rabbit? Yes, it is. So, literally, as I said, I just get my hands in there and get dirty. So you can see with this one, the rabbit, it's kind of a moister mix like the hair, but it's not too moist and it's not sticky. Um, so it's just easier and it is, as I said, pushing it into the moulds with your fingers. Easiest way I have found. Um, with other dehydrators, you'll see in a minute, I'll show you. Um, my first dehydrator, these didn't fit. And again, like the pyramid pans, I uh, chopped it up to make it work. I lost a few, I, I think I've lost like five treats on each tray, which yes, that doesn't sound like much, but it makes it such a pig to fill. Now I know I've got the, um, you know, I can actually fit them in as normal. So I should have just, gave in and got my bio chef sooner um but just another thing to take into consideration when you're getting a dehydrator you can pick some up if you're really really lucky marketplace and ebay where people have been bought them and they haven't used them you can pick them up cheap because nobody knows really what they've got because they haven't used it or they've upgraded um most people would probably sell my bio chef when they got the beast that i have but as i say i got the bigger one because of the amount of dogs that I have and dehydrate for. And eventually I want to go into my actual business with this. So it will come, everything has its time. So, um, any questions from anyone? I'm trying to keep checking, but I'm also like trying to cram as much in as I can to show you. If anyone has any questions after the fact that they think of, after the fact, after the live, um, drop me a message, comment in the group, whatever and if it's something that i've kind of forgotten to say that i think is good for everyone to know i'll uh, do an extra little post in the group whether ruby likes it or not love you 
Cool. So I've got the rabbit in that one. It is all squished down. Chances are I have probably got some little air pockets in there. It happens because of the size of it is size of the holes but you can see how thin that layer is on top just so it stays connected and that'll just slide in on um, my tray so this is one of the ones i originally got it started off like this and to make it fit in my dehydrator i chopped it down so now it's a bit of a faff to get it in there because i have to be careful when i get near the corner um, so i tend to avoid it if i can again it's just me if I'm doing it, I want to do it as quickly as I can to get as much in as I can because then I can sit down and chill. Which is exactly how my evening will be spent and doing lesson plans for classes this weekend. So, any more questions? I'll finish this tray and then we'll do the venison so you can see the difference there as well. Praying that my battery lasts. You have no idea how much it's actually going to kill my brain that um, I'm not completely finishing a protein before I move on to the next one. But that's OCD for you. I know it sounds weird saying I have OCD when I do this. But it means that I kind of stay a lot cleaner in between proteins where other people might kind of lapse a little bit for speed and ease, especially when you're doing it for just your own dogs. So in there, in that corner there, I felt that although it looked covered, pushed down and I knew that it was empty in the cavity last bit <laughs> so yeah, using fingertips just to check that I've squished as much as I can in because I don't want to have to use more trays than I need to there we go, we've got empty corners again. So they're the ones in these trays that tend to end up um, not filling properly. It's cool. I've also used actually with these um, nature's menu like cartons. Um, really nice and easy to put into these molds with a knife. Super easy. It is already cooked, but when it dehydrates, you still get the same kind of cubes anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Switch protein again. Oh. Slidey board. Right, put them to one side because I'll finish them off with a rabbit. Okay, venison. So, my venison is a little bit brown because I didn't put a lid on the box when I got it out. Um, but it's fine because it's going in the dehydrator anyway. And the dog's stomach acid is a higher level anyway, so if there's anything on the surface from it sitting out like that, I'll pop it in the oven to be safe. Um, after dehydrating, like I said before, lowest um, temperature you've got on your oven for three to five minutes, um, just to kill anything off, and that will kind of sort it out. Now, this venison's actually quite dry. However, I have been caught out by that before. I have thought that it's quite dry and tried to do it the quick and easy way and then discovered that it wasn't actually all that dry anyway. So we shall do some donuts, some big donuts. Um, I can't tell you any other way to do these because I've never tried another way because by the time I got this mold, I was just kind of hands on, get in there and get it done. So it's just, I, I tend to overflow these a little bit as well. Um, because the slight shrinkage you'll get from the meat, it'll end up and about the right size anyway. So you know what size is coming out. Again, that's just the experimentation, um, figuring it out with whatever mold you can get or have. Um, little bits of connective tissue there in between them. Whichever one's got the least in it gets moved across to the other shape. Ugh. Right, any more questions while I stuff this mold and get it done? Trying to use as much of the time efficiently as I can, knowing that my battery's dying a horrible death. Anything? God, this is really dry today. Normally it's really, really sloppy. Literally looks like you've added water to it normally, but 
maybe I'll do this in future and, and leave it to air dry a little bit before I put it in moulds, if it helps me out. Although normally if I'm doing it, I'm just kind of like, yeah, let's get it out of the fridge and let's go. I'm not normally this prepared for when I'm doing it. I'm like, I've got a few minutes or hours um, to spare. So let's get it done. Da, 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 da. All right, what I'll do once I finish this mold, I'm just thinking, because I said about um, showing you the testicle crisps getting flipped and the skin on them, is I will quickly check them once I've filled this mold. Again, just in case my battery runs out, so I make sure that you've seen it um, and it's up there for safety. And then I can come back and do more molds until the battery dies. No questions from anyone? last one right cool so they're all stuffed and they can go in right wipe again because although nothing touches the surface I'm just being safe towel okay so with my testicles so where we had that kind of sloshy effect before with the water you can see it's all it's dried out now and these have all got a skin on can poke that one's a little bit soft still in the middle but that's cool um there's no pleasant way to do it it is just flipping them yourself now what i might do so that you can see the benefits in flipping them is i might leave one unflipped so that you can see the difference in the two sides and again it's just my ocd that likes it to look the same both sides so therefore I flip them to make sure um, it is what it is but yeah these ones are ones that I cut long ways and those are the same way as I cut in uh, part one of this see that one's a little bit softer and you can still see that there's um, liquid on the tray there's going to be because that's what they're made of um, but just trying to help with uh, drying it out as much as possible and making it easier for me to handle. And doing this one-handed is not easy, people. 